Welcome to the Numerology and Astrology for November 8th, 2021. If you add all those numbers together, you get the number 15. And if you add the 1 and the 5 together, you get the number 6. The number 6 is a spiritual number. It's associated with St. Hildegard. It is a number that is about art and the creative expression that is inspired by spirituality, religion, all sorts of belief systems that we have in our world. The number six calls for a quieter day. Sometimes stillness is just what we need. In a world filled with so much motion, action, activity, upgrades, and upsets, it is wise to stop and wait until something begins to shift organically. Today is a spiritual quality that calls to those deeper and subtle energies that are stirring within our core. Look for the magic that enlivens all things. Look past the obvious. Seek to find that which is beyond what is seen. Try to explore life rather than tolerate it. Too often we try to fit all things into a mental box, but that limits us and does not give us the magical space to breathe and expand. Today is a day when magic can be experienced if one is willing to see past those thoughts that restrict and limit the beauty arising. The Astrology Today The moon is in Capricorn and it helps us look at the bigger and long-term goals on our lists. Many things will take time to unfold properly, and many small and large shifts are on the horizon. In truth, it is good news. Be appreciative of those things that seem clearly laid out in front of you because so much for so long has seemed less than crystal clear for many of us. As we move closer to this Capricorn energy, it reminds me that traditions are important as they bring the gifts and flavors from the past into the present. And if we continue them, those traditions will also bring joy into future generations. Ceres and Chiron are connecting in a way that helps us learn about love and growth through that love. Mercury and Neptune will slightly square and that can add confusion that has been confounding us for the past few weeks. It might be easy to get confused. Take a softer approach and work within the boundaries of others. My quote for today. I have finally learned how to sit in peace within a mind that eternally seeks. I have finally learned that each must find their own way. And while they might cry in dismay, this is the path that will take them home. But for now, in this drama, they have chosen to roam. Each soul seeks to find the meaning to life. Each moment is an invitation to embrace the strife without acceptance of what is the mind will keep playing out an endless quiz. And my blog for today. One of the things that life reminds me again and again is how much I am disgusted by the horrible politics that divide, harm, and that are strategically planned as an outright assault on decency, compassion, and unity. I knew from a very young age that I have clearly been caught up in massively destructive political maneuvers in past lives. I'm always hyper aware as to such subtle energies and despise those that consciously and intentionally tear down societies and civilizations through false words and feigned loyalty. There is a terrible place in hell for those that come up with the ideas that are designed to harm and are intended to gain power, wealth, and favor. I am always amazed when humanity cannot see how they are being used and abused. I am also clear that my awareness comes from being burned so badly that one's consciousness is on alert for the conditions and circumstances that allow for the enslavement of weaker minds. I recognize that we are in a world that must learn through trial and error. While I wish that they could learn from the experience of others, great writers, history, and the collapse of previous civilizations, I know that such wishful thinking is impractical. I am sure many tried to warn me in my previous incarnations. I am sure I did not listen with the passion that their warning merited in moments. And not listening manifested a consequence that I still feel and remember. One such moment was, in the 14th century, I remember being a very weak son of a wealthy ruler. I was the fourth son and had no power or status because of being fourth in line. I also had something like tuberculosis, and so I was skinny and very weak. But what I lacked in physical skills and strength, I made up for in awareness. No one ever paid mind to me. No one ever took me seriously. No one ever really noticed me. And I used this to my advantage. 
I could watch and listen to conversations that were not for my ears, and I could gather up pieces of information and put things together. Problem was that no one ever took me seriously. I tried to warn my father that there was a group going against him and his rulership. I warned my oldest brother that there was a threat against his life and that poison was going to be used. I tried to tell those that had the ear of important people in positions that could make a difference, and still no one took me seriously. Finally, in one desperate attempt to stop the inevitable, I told the head of the King's Guard what I knew. He listened to me and partially believed me, but it was too late. That night, he was killed in a pub and his body dumped in a river. I saw it happen from the shadows after I warned him. I rushed back to my father to report the killing, but my father was already dead in his room. I ran to my oldest brother's room, and he is in the process of dying, fading in my arms as the darkness engulfed the room. That is when I left, taking the hidden passages out, of, out to the village as I heard the clashing of swords and the screams of men as they f died fighting, surprised, and in agony. I slipped through the gate, and no one noticed, as all eyes were looking in the direction of the conflicts coming from the castle. Into the night I wandered, keeping to the tree line, hiding in the shadows, avoiding the mercenaries that waited by the raging fires as they sharpened swords and prepared to kill any people of importance in station that managed to escape the showdown. That is when I realized who the leader of this confrontation was, my father's spiritual confidant. He stood in the firelight, gloating and feeling so empowered, bragging and exclaiming his influence, and I kept hidden and moving away from those that hold treachery so dear and, and power as a supposed shield of protection. I lost everyone in my family that night, but I gained perspective, something that is invaluable for centuries. I learned to listen and look. I learned to be still and observe. I learned to not believe those that feign friendship. I learned to look past when someone is trying to sell me something. I learned to recognize the inherent weaknesses within the hearts of men. I learned that greed and power are a poison that can turn strengths and loyalty into horror, mayhem, and murder. I learned to never trust someone whose soul is hidden from the light. I learned that there is power in invisibility and that survival depends less on circumstance, and more on awareness. Thanks, everyone.